Hi everybody, TJ Mac Vintage Cards here, and today I'm doing episode 11 of my hockey case build, where I'm building a case of hockey stars from 1952 to 63, Parkhurst and Tops, and uh, they're depicted in three quarters or more body shots, just to kind of give an overall artistic appeal to the case. First we got Gordy Howe to recap, and Rocket Richard, and you can check any previous episodes to get background on these players. Tim Horton, Frank Mahovlich, Dickie Moore, Milt Schmidt, and we have Doug Harvey, Brett Hall, Jean Rattel, Ted Lindsay. Last episode was Gump Worsley, and I apologize if my allergies are acting up. And today we're doing the 1960 Parkhurst Allen Stanley. And there's not a ton out there on Alan Stanley. He was a Hall of Fame defenseman. Um, I'm just going to go through some of his background, and then I'm going to talk about something else uh, real quick. Just a, kind of a comparison of something from my past to what I'm doing here with this case. But this is a 1960 Parkhurst uh, Alan Stanley, and it's in a grade 5. Uh, and the other 60 Parkhurst I have in the case is the Rocket Richard. It's got the yellow background. Uh, they had different colored backgrounds um, for these cars in that set. Just a... Uh, Really nice image. Um, they, they would use the same images of the players in a few different years, which I don't particularly like, but I'm not doing player runs, so it doesn't really bother me. But um, but I find it funny that they have like the same pose, just with a different background in some of the years. Kind of lazy, if you think about it. And on the back here, we got a nice uh, imprint of the, of the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. It looks like kind of like a watermark. Very cool. This tells you about Alan Stanley here, born in 1926. Uh, lifetime to date, he had 611 games played, 239 points. And this kind of talks about what he did in 1959. And then you have the uh, French, um, in French underneath it, because it's a Parker's card, so it's in English and French. Switch back over here. So uh, Stanley, he was a three-time All-Star defenseman. He played 21 years with the Rangers, the Blackhawks, the Bruins, Maple Leafs, and Flyers. However, it's his 10 seasons with the Leafs where he found his most success winning four Stanley Cups. And he finished his career, and there you saw it was through 600 and something games, but he had 1,244 games in his career, had just 100 goals, 433 assists. He was, to me, your, your classic stay-at-home type defenseman. He was not known to leave the zone and go on the attack like uh, Doug Harvey or Red Kelly, uh, the latter of which I'll profile in a later episode. In fact, he was uh, he was nicknamed Snowshoes for his uh, very plodding style of skating. He was a very accurate passer, and he, he was put on the power play at times uh, just because of his great passing. And he was called by Leafs captain Hall of Famer George Armstrong, the brains behind the defense. He paired up with Tim Horton, the other Hall of Fame defenseman, <coughs> who I profiled uh, in an earlier episode. And his uh, teammate, also Hall of Famer Dick Duff, had this to say about Alan Stanley. He was such a smart player, he was always prepared to play. So <coughs> he had that reputation as being a very uh, uh, smart, uh, gritty type player. And he was also, again, paired with Tim Horton. And they were in instrumental in Toronto's run of three consecutive Stanley Cups from 1962 to 1964. And at age 41, he was still taking a regular shift, shift with the Maple Leafs. Um, and they became one of the oldest teams in the NHL to win a Stanley Cup with an average age of 31 when they beat the Montreal Canadiens in 1967. Now, after Stanley retired as a player, uh, he ran a resort in a hockey school in, uh, I think it's pronounced Bobby K. Cajon, Ontario. Bob K. Cajon, Ontario. And uh, he also enjoyed being part of uh, Maple Leafs history as a member of the franchise's last championship team. And I like this quote that I read from him, and it says, I don't go through a day without somebody reminiscing about the old days, Stanley told the Toronto Stars' Paul Hunter in 1987. I love talking about it. It was my life, and I love being part of it. Now, I can just imagine going to his resort and having a cup of coffee, or in my case, orange juice, because I don't drink coffee, as he reminisced about his past and talked about all the great players he played with, you know, how good was Bobby Orr versus Doug Harvey. He played with both of them, or against both of them. Um, 
just uh, how how uh, how hard was Bobby Hall's slap shot? Um, John Beliveau, just one of the great, graceful and elegant skaters and players of his day. What his thoughts were on him or Gordy Howe? It would just be so interesting. And to also like ask him about his career and have him reminisce about you know the different things that he did. Just sounds like a real fascinating, interesting, down to earth guy to me when I was reading a little bit about him and. Um, I just think that's what's really unique about the vintage era is you have players that didn't get tons of money. They're probably a little more down to earth than what you might see today. It doesn't mean the players today are bad or anything like that. I don't mean that. But I just think that these people were very real people because they didn't have tons of money and things like that. So they're probably just a little more relatable in some ways. So I find that uh, real interesting when you, when you read about them and just kind of hear about what they did and how they lived their lives. So with that, I just want to talk real quick. When I was doing this um, case build, you can see the players all lined up. Now, when I was a kid, I loved um, rod hockey. I don't know if anybody ever played rod hockey, but here's what it looked like. And we used to have uh, all kinds of tabletop tournaments in my house and things like that. And this is what my set actually looked like. You have the scoreboards on the top and all the player logos. You see the Harper Whalers, Calgary Flames. There's the old Quebec Nordiques logo, and they had these uh, crowds around the side. And this is the Whalers versus the Flyers. But here's what the vintage players look like, and we had these sets as well, because um, I had cousins and stuff, and they would hand down some of their old older sets, so you'd get the players without the helmets. And here's the old Sabres right here. This would have been from the 70s. And then they had um, this set here of the Blackhawks from the 70s. What I think is kind of cool, when you look at these and you compare them to, like, some of the cards, you know, there's some similarities there in the images. And I don't know if that's what's kind of drawing me to do it this way, like building this full body shots is just to kind of reminisce and remember uh, those days playing uh, rod hockey and how much I thoroughly enjoyed it. But you can just see, like, how similar some of these images are. And I just really um, enjoy that aspect of building this case because it is making me connect to... Um, those times playing those games with my uh, friends and brother's friends and, and just relatives and things like that. So just thought I'd share that just as a, another observation. There's just like a larger shot of it from here, which I think is just kind of cool. And they still make these sets today. Um, these are the two-dimensional, but now they have like the Stiga, S-T-I-G-A sets with the um, multi-dimensional players, which are kind of nice. Um, I, I have one of those at our house now that my kids play with. But these are the old school ones that obviously hold the uh, more meaning to me just because uh, connection to my past. So everybody have a great day and we'll talk again soon.